Call to order the June 10th meeting of the Shelby Township Planning Commission. I'll ask the secretary to call the roll, please. Mr. Snyder. Here. Mr. Long. Here. Ms. Baker. Here. Ms. Casali. Here. Mr. Opone. Here. Mr. Turner is absent and Mr. LeRae is absent tonight. Chairman Moffitt, we have a quorum. Great, thank you. Uh, next item is approve the agenda. So moved. Support. Support. It's been moved and supported. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, next, approval of the minutes from the April 22nd meeting. So moved. moved. Moved and supported. All in favor? Aye. 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 First item is correspondence that we received from the Charter Township of Washington regarding uh, a notice of their uh, updated master plan. Uh, we'll ask the planner to offer brief comments. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, Shelby Township and Washington Township share a common boundary along 26 Mile from DeQuinder to Hayes Road. Uh, most of the parcels on the north side of 26 Mile along the corridor are developed, except for smaller infill parcels. The largest undeveloped land is west of Van Dyke, um, it, which is near Stony Creek there. Um, the proposed rezone, um, zoning of all the parcels listed on the future land use map are consistent with the Shelby Township Zoning District. So um, I don't have any objections or any comments as it relates to our uh, zoning compared to their proposed zonings. Okay, any questions for the planner? Hearing none, is there a motion to adopt? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Apone. Move to support the adoption of the Charter Township of Washington Master Plan. Support. It's been moved and supported. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, next, next item is site plan number 24-16, uh, Adam Newton for the uh, Department of Roads. Is there a representative coming up? You've got the lucky ticket. Uh, name and address. Uh, What's your? Uh, hang on, hang on. Into the microphone. There you go. Adam and when Newton. you're done, then sign in. Okay. Go. Uh, Adam Newton. Uh, my home address or the you organization address. address? Pardon me. Office address is fine. One one seven South Grossbeck, Mount Clemens, Michigan. Uh, four eight zero four three. Okay. Mm -hmm. what, what are you? What are you here for? Uh, uh, the Macomb County Department of Roads is proposing a new salt barn at uh, at the uh, site there on Nappy Drive. Uh, it's a current site that uh, there's a current salt barn, but it's in disrepair. So we're proposing a new new salt barn. So our code enforcement code enforcement people were uh, on the spot and uh, getting you to, to step you step it up. I'm kidding. Okay. Uh, which <laughs> who? who... Sorry, Thank you, Chairman. Um, so as the applicant stated, they're looking to install a warehouse for salt storage on the site. Um, they're looking to do it as a, you know, it's a pre-built uh, structure. Uh, it's covered in metal panels, uh, has, features wood T111 siding in the upper portions, and then wood board with columns and braces on the bottom portions. As far as the site goes, it's zone LM light manufacturing. Uh, they use for warehousing storage. Uh, that's a permitted use within that zoning district. So this would be a permitted use uh, to expand on that property. Uh, the properties around it to the north, south, and east are also zoned light manufacturing. The property to the west is zoned C3, that's shopping center business uh, that features the big uh, Walmart uh, in Shelby. Um, as far as the proposal goes, it's fairly straightforward. I do have a few minor site plan review comments that can mostly be addressed by uh, adjusting the site plan itself, adding some you know, common features to the site plan to help us understand the plan a little better. Uh, the first one would be that we need a customary scale for the site plan. This comes from not only a planning uh, requirement, but also a fire department requirement to make sure they can uh, ensure adequate vehicle access for their emergency vehicles. Um, next, within those industrially zoned districts, those LM districts, we require the closest point between two buildings not be less than 40 feet. Uh, we can't tell necessarily what the distance is, but it's presumed to be less than 40. Um, with that, too, the building department requires a minimum of 20 feet uh, to negate the need for fire resistant walls. So if you can't provide 40 feet, a variance will be required, but at least 20 feet should be sought there for the building department requirements. Um, the next thing, and this is for the planning commission itself, the proposed uh, facade material that they're using for this structure, they have the T111 wood siding in the north and south elevations, which can be considered decorative. Um, now at the bottom portion of the building, roughly 12 feet uh, to grade, they're proposed using plywood sheathing with battens, columns, and braces on all four sides. This is, um, 
not quite in line with our ordinance requirements, which require brick and stone and other decorative, durable building, building standards for industrial properties. So it would be good for the Planning Commission to either offer recommendations for this siding or you know, review it otherwise. Um, other than that, like I said most of the rest of the comments can be addressed by revising the site plan itself. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I understand it's a salt storage building, but you should, we've got the prettiest water tower or water uh, containment uh, uh, structure, I think, in the county. Um, I guess I, um, given its location, I, I would, I would, uh, my preference would be that the that the, the county uh, comply with with uh, township standards um, and, and adjust its elevations accordingly. Any, anyone disagree uh, or comments? Mrs. Casale? Uh, I agree, but uh, according to the standards, then, does that, this doesn't, this lower half uh, building material doesn't comply with our so ordinance? The ordinance requires brick, stone, or better. Uh, with light manufacturing. Now, it does allow for alternative decorative durable building materials. Uh, we see the Nishiwa cement fiber um, fiberglass panels. We see some wood siding sometimes. We see even, even metal siding. Um, this would definitely fall under the requirement for review by the Planning Commission. Okay. Thank you. So, I, okay, that, I, I was kind of cheating my way out of this. Say, I mean, if you wanted to do something less, I mean, we could table this and then come back with some another alternative I, that's, if that's, maybe that's easier. Because stone and brick might be a little much for the size and, you know, purpose. Sure. But we need to do something better than what's being proposed. So okay. Um, okay. Maybe, maybe it's appropriate to take, you know, let's postpone it this time, sharpen the pencil a little bit, come back with, okay, we're, we're going to put these sorts of materials. Okay. I'm not going to tell you how to do it. Let's see if there's any other issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> any, any other comments? Anything else? No, I just no, no. There's some issues no, no. That I, I was, he can I take was, it back I, now. I hadn't. There's, we had we hadn't called the motion yet, so we're still good. All right, I've been doing this long enough. So, but thank you though. Uh, any other comments, concerns, questions? Going once. You sure? Okay. Um, is there a motion then? I do need a motion. Oh, can I ask a question though? Oh yeah. Uh, sure. Yeah. So um, I can still seek a variance on the 40 feet, right? Uh, we're still going to meet the 20 for sure, but it was my understanding we can seek a variance for the for the 40 feet. Uh, is that correct? I would think so. Yeah, I don't think. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You can still seek okay. a variance. Right. Right. Okay. You want to do? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, when you seek a variance, do you come back for another meeting like there's this? There's a zoning. There's a zoning. Yeah. A separate a meeting, meeting like this. Exactly. Like this, but a separate. Diff right. Not first, a planning first Thursday meeting. of the month. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Thanks. Yes. Okay. I can help you out with all that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, is there a motion? You postpone. Table. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Casale. Um, I move to table the site plan number 24-16 Adam Newton for Macomb County Department of Roads for the property located at 51235 Nappy Drive, parcel number 230714376009, generally located north of 23 Mile Road, east of Shelby Parkway, Salt Storage Building. The uh, table is to uh, revisit the uh, materials used for the building and come back with uh, something more appropriate. Support. Something then moved by Casali, support by uh, Moore. Any questions on the motion? Uh, hearing none, Commissioner Casali? Yes. Commissioner Moore? Yes. Commissioner Pone? Yes. Commissioner Baker? Yes. Commissioner Long? Yes. Commissioner Snyder? Yes. And sure with Jess. See you at the next one. Okay. All right, thanks. So I sign up for another meeting then. I'm sorry. I sign up for another meeting because yeah. it was tabled. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, next item is site plan 24-13, Nico Schultz for Auburn Hicks. Good evening. Uh, my name is Nico Schultz. I'm Senior Vice President at Suave Enterprises and we're uh, Auburn Hickson LLC, the applicant and owner of uh, Stone Ridge Apartments. Um, 
we're, I'm, I think, a new face to the group. We were here back in late summer of 22. I didn't stand up and speak, but I was here, and we've worked with the township since. Um, we've got a great team involved. We have everybody here to go through and an answer any questions that we may have. Um, Brian McAllister from Suave Enterprises, my colleague, is here. Uh, Andy Wakeland from Giffels Webster for Civil Engineering. Jim Epink, who is right here on my left, he is going to get into all the detail of the project uh, and what we're asking for in our site plan uh, application. Uh, he covers all land planning and landscape architecture. Uh, Steve Dykstra, Hobbs and Black, is the architect. He's unfortunately not here this evening, but I think the architecture is simple enough we can answer any questions if they come up. Um, Rick Sable, legal counsel, is with us as well, and I think we are, we're prepared to answer any questions as we go through. Um, the, I was looking back and it being since summer of 22, I started looking back also on when the original plan was approved in 2017, and it's been a very long road since then. Um, a number of things have changed. Uh, the plan was put in place that included a number of additional adjacent properties. Uh, since then, people have passed away. Um, family plans and businesses have had uh, changes in their course, and parties have dissolved, parties have come together, and some property owners simply want to continue their existing operations. I'm not speaking of us, but others involved. Uh, we are remaining as consistent as we possibly can. We'd like to expand on the good work that we've done in phase one. We can't control any adjacent properties, uh, but we can continue the good development, the high quality of community that we've developed uh, in phase one. We'd like to simply expand that over into phase two and continue the same architecture, the same building quality, and expand on a number of uh, amenities and things that you probably have seen in, uh, within the website, within the application. Uh, we're proposing phase two as a site plan approval under our existing uh, R10 zoning. And from summer of 22, we've taken everything to heart. We've worked with planning, engineering, legal, the county, and it's been a very collaborative process. What you see here tonight and what Jim will take you through is the product. Um, we are proposing fewer units than before. We are proposing fewer units than are allowed under the existing zoning. Uh, we are preserving more open space than we proposed before, and certainly more than is required. Uh, so we also eliminated some of the development that went up Hickson Road. We heard that as being disruptive. We peeled that back. And we've created more amenities, not only in phase two that we proposed, but also to add some into phase one, make for operational purposes and for benefits amenities to the residents. We've confirmed our utility capacity. That's been an important one. And as I mentioned, we are preserving the architecture. We want to pull that phase one architecture over to phase two and really make it as seamless and least disruptive as, uh, as possible. So ultimately, we believe we're building on the success of phase one and hope that we can expand that and just continue the good work that we've been doing. Jim's going to take us through the details, but again, as I said, if there are questions that come up, we're all available here. Thank you, Nico. And thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, it's Jim Epping. Uh, I'm at 9336 uh, Sashbar Road, Clarkston, Michigan. I'm a land planner and appreciate being uh, with you again. I'm going to stand back here. Um, as Nico pointed out, uh, we've been working on this and with the community for an awful long time. Uh, we have uh, uh, worked together looking at our R10 zoning. The, the land is currently zoned R10. Uh, in total, we've got about 43 acres of land. Phase one, which is built, and I'm sure you've all seen on Auburn Road, is about 13 acres, and the balance, about 30 acres, uh, is, is within that phase two. Really what we're trying to do is to, as Nico pointed out, build on, add on to the success of phase one, um, construct phase two, 
preserve a total of about, in addition to what's already there, of an additional 4.5 acres of open space that'll remain open space as part of the plan. Uh, and then add to the site amenities for the residents, both uh, in phase two and in phase one, and try and you know just kind of continue to make it a real outdoor community. Walking through the existing conditions, um, it really has been come very very successful. I think it's 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 one of the premier four lease neighborhoods in Shelby Township. Uh, we've had great success with residents. Um, it was constructed in 2019, and there's about 100 and not about, there are 192 residents there now, residential units uh, in phase one now. Uh, very, very low vacancy, and what's great to see is that we have an awful lot of our leases that will re-sign and stay multiple years, you know, kind of indicating what a great community it is, good location, close to Troy Beaumont, or, or Troy, uh, uh, Beaumont Troy, no longer Beaumont. Uh, but it's in a great location uh, with some of the improvements that Shelby Township has done on Auburn Road and then Rochester Hills next door. It's really becoming a great part of the community to, to continue to enjoy. Uh, one, one of many things that we promote is on-site management. It makes it a very clean, uh, a very enjoyable, just a residential neighborhood. We really uh, look at this as, as just another neighborhood in Shelby Township. Part of what we are really excited about is, is we obviously have a large lake there, uh, about a 52 acre lake and, and we uh, occupy the southern end, the southwest corner of the, of the lake. Um, it's a big outdoor area and so phase one, we were very, very specific to design it with an awful lot of green space at the lake, amenities out there like a, a small beach and kayaking and canoeing, volleyball, and we're gonna continue that into phase two. There's a clubhouse right now with an outdoor pool, a hot tub, a lot of activities around there that are really, really busy on the weekends. Um, the lake, as we mentioned, is, is a great lake, beach and kayaks. There's no motors, uh, but, but people certainly do enjoy the lake, just uh, if nothing else, to sit by it. The landscaping we're very proud of. The landscape uh, has been well maintained. It um, you know, continues to be just very, very clean, well-operated area. Following up on that, in terms of investment into phase one, as Nico pointed out, uh, part of our proposal tonight is a proposed clubhouse expansion, uh, uh, greater amenities to the, to the great lawn, that lawn out, area out by the front, we're calling the great lawn, additional carports, uh, adding some carports to both phase one and phase two, improved dumpster facilities, some things that we've learned through operating it where dumpsters can be better located so that they're well used and, and safe to, to um, empty and so forth, converting a, a trash compactor structure that we have out on the east side into a maintenance building, so putting a decorative roof and securing that so it can be used for more maintenance than that trash compactor that was previously there, improving the volleyball courts out at the water, and adding, within phase one, adding an additional 23 parking spots to make that area function better. The green area across the front really is uh, key to the whole project. Uh, and as part of that, what we're looking to do is in phase two, that whole area up Hickson Road, which when we came to you 18 months ago, we, we considered attached condos, we considered duplexes, all different things. Working with the planning department, working with the, the community and so forth, and really just continuing to go up and down Hickson Road. Our proposal is to make that per permanent open space. So we've got about four and a half acres up on Hickson Road there that really will be left almost untouched. Along the, along the lake, we're gonna put in some wood chip trails, some more picnic areas, a pavilion down closer to um, kind of the elbow of, of the lake there, but really leave that a natural area both along the lake and maybe just as importantly for the residents across the street. You'll see that phase two really becomes just kind of a small pocket within that, quite a bit smaller than the phase one development. Clicking to there. So again, up on the top, four and a half acres, natural space, more parks as we move closer along towards phase one, some additional dog parks for large and small dogs, um, bocce ball courts, all these different types of activities being added outside. Within the residential area, we're proposing four buildings exactly the same as, as the large buildings that are there now. I say that because there's a few half buildings up on the, on the east corner. 
Um, each building will have 24 units or a total of 96 additional units. Um, additional parking, expanded sidewalks, past all the collector areas. Um, what we've done specifically, and your site plans will show that, is we've really tried to maximize or, or exceed the buffers on Hickson and Auburn Road. Uh, we've taken those and we've nearly doubled, or I nearly added 50% to those buffers. So we've moved the land, we've added more landscape and moved the parking and buildings in from Hickson. We've moved it in from Auburn Road as well. So it's gonna be green internally, but I think really green externally as well. By the numbers and going through the ordinance, again, we have R10 zoning. We're really staying within that R10 zoning. The bottom line, as Nico pointed out, is we've got fewer units than are permitted under the zoning and substantially more open space than is required. Um, we mentioned 96 buildings. We're about 10% fewer buildings. If you do the math and the calculations in the ordinance, we're about 10% or 28 fewer residents than would be permitted mathematically by the ordinance. Um, open space under R10, it's, it's a strange part. There's really only a little bit of open space technically required around each building with our four and a half acres adding to um, phase one. Just in phase two, we're, we're about 400% more open space than would be required, but we think it's important. No additional curb cuts on Auburn Road one additional uh, required curb cut on Hickson Road, deliberately not taking any of the traffic further north onto Hickson so it empties out closer to Auburn Road. Uh, parking, just within phase two, we're required to have 210 spots. Uh, we're actually gonna provide 281 because we've learned, we're adding a few more in phase one as we talked about, but we've really learned that with our residents that the parking becomes key. We wanna make sure we have enough vi for visitors. So we've spread that around, I think, pretty well. Setbacks, uh, an additional 46 foot setback on Auburn Road and an additional 47 foot on Hickson Road. So um, quite a ways off the street and that gives us an op opportunity to do more landscaping. Uh, utilities, as Nico mentioned, we're, we're doing everything internally, so we'll be connecting to all the phase one utilities, water lines, sewer lines, uh, everything will be handled internally, as well as with the detention with that internal uh, pond that's there now. So there really won't be any disturbances to the, to the outside areas. Architecture matches phase one. Uh, building materials have held up great. We think it still looks brand new, and so we're excited to continue on that. Uh, carports, uh, plan to have about 30% of the carports being, um, or the parking spots being under carports, and we've talked about the landscape. We will, uh, should your commission uh, grant us uh, approval, we're aware that we will have to go to the ZBA and ask for two variances. Uh, the first variance is the front of building to front of building setback. The ordinance, your ordinance, as you know, is, is uh, related to the height of the building. These buildings are just under 40 foot tall, so we should have 80 foot between buildings. Between two of our buildings, buildings K and L, we're actually proposing 70 feet. It's actually consistent with the same spacing that we have in phase one, but it's really a result of, of trying to maximize the, the exterior buffers and bring everything inwards. So uh, should you consider that, uh, we would go, then go to the ZBA and ask for that 10 foot variance on the building to buildings just in one location. The second variance relates to that um, open space or green space around the perimeter of, of a multifamily building. The ordinance calls for a 25 foot perimeter. We're anywhere from about 23 feet in some cases to down to about eight foot in other cases. We worked back and forth, and again, that's also consistent with the spacing of phase one. What's interesting, um, and I think Julie and Nick are aware of this, is, is there's some new fire standards that have to do with the reach of a ladder uh, from a fire truck. And working with the fire marshal, it's, it's my understanding, I think he's provided letters that, that he, uh, is comfortable in that this, this proposed uh, spacing meets the code. So it seems as though the, the ordinance might need to be updated to uh, comply with the fire code. I'm, I'm not an expert on that, but it is a variance that we'll seek should you um, consider that approval. So in conclusion, you know, it, it's, it's nice to build on success. Uh, we've got a very beautiful, successful community there. 
the residents, our Shelby Township residents, they very much feel like a neighborhood within your community. And we're uh, excited to build on that. We look forward to it and here to answer any questions. Appreciate it. All right, thank you. Um, yeah, I can understand why you'd want to continue because apartments are, 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 are very profitable. Um, and I'm sure they've, they've been quite successful for you. I guess, you know, some of the questions I would have internal within the board is, at what, you know, do we need additional apartments? Is that the best use for that property? I'm a little taken aback because I remember the initial proposal when there were single family homes, there was commercial, and then a small amount of, of multifamily. And for an area in the township that really could use a, a little boost of economic multi-sector, multi-level economic development, it was, was welcomed and a great idea and a great replacement to the, uh, the water park. And there was a soccer dome across the street. And I think if you look across to Quinder Road and you see what uh, Rochester is doing, you know, on Auburn and how they've been able to spruce up their commercial piece and just through some sculptures and some creative uh, road work that I think there is potential for that part of the township to see a, a, an increase. Um, so we went from, and I understand there were some complications with ownerships and partnerships and that, so it, 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 it changed. But we went from single family, commercial, multifamily to okay, well, we have to take out sort of the, the, the single family, so we'll still give you, and we had talked uh, two years ago, or whatever it was, about doing a, you know, detail, or like a duplexes, I think there were, and then, then there became issues on whether, you know, um, the, the, um, the strength of, the, of the, 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 the exposed water table right. to what that is, and whether that worked, and I think that was somewhat of a hollow issue, but whatever. Um, and so now we've come back to, it's just an apartment complex. You know, and had, you, had, had that been the argument 14 years ago when this first came aboard, I think the conversations were a little bit different. You know, I, rep, I, I recall this as a PUD, so I thought there was, some, mm -hmm. there was some interaction between and we'd sort of agreed to this understanding some conditions have changed. We've kind of sort of come, you know, 180 degrees to where probably this is, you know, what you'd invent, you know, well, I, don't, I can't say that I'm going to speak for anybody, but this is probably high end best use for a developer is to put put you know probably getting a good a, a good higher portion of density onto a piece of property and i don't know that that frankly is in the best interest of the township but i'm just one small little voice on this board um does anyone from the board want to talk or i can turn to the planner for their comments yeah plan when we get the planner to comment okay thank you mr moffett um what I wanted to say is this is a the, the proposal is a use by right in the zoning district and uh, as Mr. Epping explained and Mr. Schultz um, it is zoned uh, multiple family R10 so um, we had performed a preliminary review uh, on this site all the comments that are listed under the site plan uh, regulatory compliance comments um, have been addressed except for the few comments that Mr. Epping mentioned um, related to the uh, setback uh, front to front building set or yeah building front to front setback and the interior setbacks and granite um you know they are providing they have moved the buildings in further on the site so obviously this causes um a, sort of a compaction issue but i would rather have uh, a buffer along hickson and auburn road and maybe there's there's room for you know a variance in this case being that the buildings are pushed inward and we have a nice landscape facade along auburn and uh hickson as um far as that goes, uh, the only other issue that I had is the trash receptacle that is right at the corner of Auburn and Hickson. I know we had discussed that before. Um, usually trash receptacles are either behind buildings or interior to the site where they're not viewed from the main roads. Um, so if there's an alternative location that they can remove that dumpster from the, the corner, that would, be, uh, that would be great. I, I would not like to see that dumpster at the corner of the site. Um, also, just commend the applicants on the proposed improvements to phase one as well. So I think for a fairly new project to go in there and add on to the existing building, uh, construct dog parks and provide more amenities, I think that's admirable in this type of development. So, so the pro and, and then I, this predated you, I believe, but, but the process that we had gone through um, to allow for commercial into and if, if, if the zoning was always had never changed and we didn't deal with this as a PUD so we allowed we were allowing commercial in a in an R12 we were allowing single family so we were allowing R1B in a in an R12 and that's R10 and that uh, that's that's appropriate right so originally this site was rezoned it went through a straight rezoning um, probably more than 
13 years ago, I want to say, and it came in, it was originally proposed, light ma it was originally light manufacturing, and the applicant proposed to rezone it to R10, which at that time it was approved. So it was not part of a PUD plan or any contingent upon any additional uh, site plans. Um, that was a straight rezoning. When it came to us in 2017 is w when it was proposed as a PUD to this board, um, the, which included the parcels to the east as well. And that's why in, a, in that PUD, you can have a mixture of those uses, commercial, single family, so on and so forth. But the underlying zoning is R10. So we're, we're, we're just, we're. Stuck. Uh, what's that? Stuck. I don't know about that, but you know, Mr. Kirk will make a few more dollars. Um, um, all right, so we're doing away with PUD. It's, so we're, we're it, casting that aside or it didn't exist or what? It expires two years after approval. Okay. All right. It's just so why so why did we go through this exercise in, in 12 when they clearly wanted to do this, and then we tried to go you know it seemed to be yeah I right, can't answer that I guess that. The, yeah. all right fair enough all right to the board any questions comments nothing okay yeah, well I guess thank you for the clarification so the property was um, in 2012. Zoned, rezoned at that time. Don't quote me on the date, but many years ago, over over 12 or 13 years ago, it was rezoned from light manufacturing to R10. It was a straight rezoning. Okay, 2017, they came in with a proposal, R10 PUD. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Expired after two years, and now it goes back to R10. Correct. And now the petitioners here with R10. Correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Chairman, can the applicant just clarify the location of the trash receptacle that's in front? Um, are they going to seek another location for it? Um, what are the intents? So uh, we, as it relates to the trash enclosure, we'll certainly work with the planning department or, or the staff and, and find an appropriate location. Uh, it makes sense to us. We actually set it back about 105 feet and we've got a heck of a lot of landscaping. We can continue to add landscaping or look for a different area. Our goal was to put them kind of in selective quadrants so that they're, they, they're actually used as opposed to people not using them and they can easily have trucks in and out, but we'll certainly continue. We have one. I don't know if you can see. Uh, down one in the corner and then one up in the, the north corner, we're also adding one in the middle. Uh, I think uh, Ms. Mischich, the planner, is, is concerned primarily with this one in the corner and uh, we can work together and, and find an appropriate location for that or continue to buffer it, uh, how it works best for the town. Um, okay. Happy to answer any other questions. Okay, is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, Mr. Bone. <clears throat> move to approve site plan number 24-13, Nico Schultz, Auburn Hickson, LLC, vacant parcel number 23-07-30-380-002, and 23-07-30-381. And 07-30-451-009, on the north side of Auburn Road, east of DeQuinder, Stone Ridge of Shelby Multifamily Phase 2, 96 units, and the proposed improvements to Phase 1 of the development. Is this not a public hearing? No. Does it on here? No. no. Support. Is there support? Okay. It's been moved and supported. There will be public com opportunity for public comment at the end of the meeting. Uh, any questions on the motion? Hearing none, Commissioner Pone? Yes. Commissioner Snyder? Yes. Commissioner Long? Yes. Commissioner Baker? Yes. Commissioner Casale? Yes. Commissioner Moore? Yes. Chair votes no. Motion carries. Next item is site plan number 24-17, Lauren Farrow, 4660-24 mile road.
Good evening. Uh, Nick Bauer, Stonefield Engineering. Uh, address is 607 Shelby Street, Detroit, Michigan, with the uh, civil engineer on the project. Um, project scope is rather limited. Um, it's the existing Bank of America at 24 and Shelby. Uh, we are proposing to uh, clean, repaint, and resurface the uh, exterior facade of the building, as well as resurface and repaint the parking lot and uh, add some security bars around the perimeter of the building to protect the building equipment and pedestrians from potential vehicular collisions. And we are adding a trash enclosure to the southeast corner of the site. Uh, currently, the dumpsters sit on grade, and uh, we're proposing to put walls in the gate around them. Um, you'll note in the engineer's review that the current location uh, is on top of a storm sewer, so we will have to relocate it slightly. Um, shipped in its south, uh, but we'll work with the city staff to find an appropriate final location for that. Um, the intention of the project is really to just rehabilitate and beautify the site a little bit and provide a visually appealing site for the community. Um, that, any questions? Okay, thank you. Uh, who, who had the review on this? Okay, so probably a good thing you didn't go close there. All right, thanks, Nick, go ahead. Thanks for noting that. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so Mr. Bauer said he did a great job covering the improvements and changes to the site, so I won't re-hit on those and reiterate those. Um, this site itself is split zoned at C1R1B. It's a result from a combination of parcels um, back in 2002. Uh, the surrounding properties are all either residential or commercially zoned. Uh, the proposed facade, you know, not really modifications, improvements, uh, fixes, they do not uh, exceed anything that's in our ordinance. They meet all our ordinance requirements for that district. Um, the most significant thing that's being changed on the site, and really the uh, item that's you know most prevalent to us, is the trash enclosure itself. Um, we do want a trash enclosure constructed around those dumpsters. We don't want them just um, you know free flowing and you know just sitting on the property. Um, as far as you know, relocating the trash enclosures, putting them on top of that storm pipe, you know we won't allow that. It has to be at least 10 feet away for engineers' comments. Um, I'm confident that we can find a, pro a spot on that site to make it work. There's a pretty large you know, area that we can work with, even if it means retaining that current uh, paved area rather than moving it. But that's something that we can certainly figure out at the uh, administrative level. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any questions for the planner or the petitioner? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Schneider. Move to approve site plan number 2417, Lauren Farrow, Project Expeditors Consulting, 4660, 24-mile road, parcel number 23-07-17-127-012, located on the southwest corner of 24-mile road and Shelby Road, Bank of America modifications. The approval of, is subject to the submission of final revised site plans addressing the location of trash enclosure to ensure compliance with local regulations and standards. Is there support? Support. Moved by Snyder, support by Moore. Any questions on the motion? Hearing none, Commissioner Snyder. Yes. Commissioner Moore. Yes. Commissioner Wong. Yes. Commissioner Baker. Yes. Commissioner Casale. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Pone. Yes. Sure, what's yes. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, next item is site plan uh, number 24 18, uh, Stephen Mancini for Legacy Village Land Holdings. A site plan that never seems to go away. <laughs> um, uh, this is a public hearing, so I will ask the secretary to read the notice it's published. Charter Township of Shelby, notice of public hearing. Notice is hereby given that the Planning Commission for the Charter Township of Shelby, Lacombe County, Michigan, has received a request for final approval of the following planned unit development. Applicant Stephen Mancini, Legacy Village Land Holdings, LLC, 41500. Mountain Road, Sterling Heights, Michigan, 48314. Proposed use, Legacy Village Manors, duplex component, 58 units. Final planned unit development, location, it's vacant property, south of 25 Mile Road, west of Van Dyke Avenue. Final site plan, PUD number 24-18. Sidwell number 23-07-09-200-029. Legal description is as follows. The Planning Commission will meet on Monday, June 10th, 2024 at 7 p.m. in the Shelby Municipal Building, Boardroom 52700 Van Dyke Avenue, Shelby Township, Michigan, 48316, 586-726-7243 for the purpose of holding a public hearing on the final planned unit development application. The final planned unit development application and site plan may be examined at the Planning and Zoning Department 
in the municipal building Monday through Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Written comments may be submitted to the Planning Commission at the above address. Prior to the hearing, oral comments will be heard during the public hearing. This notice is provided pursuant to the requirements of Michigan Public Act 110 of 2006 as amended. Shelby Township Planning Commission, Jerome Moffitt Chair, Raquel Moore Secretary. This was published in the Shelby Utica News on May 22, 2024. There were 15 property owners and two applicants were notified by first class mail on May 21st, 2024. Thank you. Mr. Kirk, did uh, our publication meet all legal requirements? Yes, it did. Thank you. And uh, can you let us know whether this special land use request is appropriate to the zoning district? This is the second phase of the PUD. This is zone R8. Uh, the plan, I think, started out a few years back. The single family component and townhomes uh, were approved already, and this is consistent with the PUD plan. Thank you. Anyone have any questions for the attorney? Thank you. Um, so the format for the public hearing will be as follows. The petitioner will come up and state uh, their what they're requesting of this board and the reasons for it. Um, I'll then open the questioning for the commission to ask uh, for, of the petitioner um, anything uh, pertinent to allow them to make a decision. Then open it up to the public to ask any questions, make whatever comments. I will make little notes and then I'll bring the petitioner back up to answer those. It's not a debate, you know, we're just trying to educate ourselves so we make a uh, informed decision. With that, I'll ask the petitioner's representative to. Mr. Chair, can I just say, Ed, that we did not receive any correspondence? Sure. So I'm not exactly a representative of the petitioner. I'm a representative of one of the builders that will be building in it, but um, I can at least answer any questions. Um, Greg Icabelli, 51435 Industrial Drive, Macomb, Michigan, 48042. Okay. What, what, is, what, what is it? So what's your name? Greg. Okay. We're requesting the final. I, I'm just here to represent them. I can answer any questions, but. Okay. That's about it. You don't, you don't know what they're, what they're requesting? Well, we're requesting the final PUD approval, the site plan okay. for the phase two. Okay, which, which is the duplex? The duplex component, oh. yep. Cool. Um, any questions uh, from the board for the petitioner? Okay, why don't you hang tight? We'll let the public come up and see if they have any questions. And Perfect. Yeah. Okay, uh, this is the only public hearing, uh, well, not quite, well, on this request, yes. We'll hold on this request. Uh, all remarks will be entered into to, uh, um, the record for the Township Board, which will make all the ultimate decision on, on the request. Um, eventually, uh, well, so with that, is there anyone that wants to ask a question or a comment? Yeah. Karen Franklin, I live at 54414 Lawson Creek. I was notified about this meeting. I'm a little confused as to why there isn't more representatives and why I was notified that it was a Steve Macca, Maccasini? Mancini. Mancini, yes. thank you. Controls the whole, the whole project was under his development. Okay, no, but piece now it's somebody else? Well, there are, there are pieces of it, so there are other, the, the, there's our individual Builders are, are taking pieces of five or seven phase development. Five, multiple, yeah. right? Multiple. It keeps changing. The multiple, and this is the the uh, the duplex portion that's kind of in the central center, sort of in the center of the of the development. Do we have clarification as to how they're going to go about building that and accessing that land? There's um, a construction road. Well, what you, we'll tell you. We'll, we'll we'll bring the petitioner up in a second, and and okay. he can answer that. But, um, yeah. it, I directly live behind, I live in phase one directly bordering phase two, and I'm already experiencing erosion of my fence and my yard because of the issues with phase two and the drainage and how they've set it up. I've had the township come out and look at it once. I've had to contact the builder by flagging down construction workers, um, and I'm concerned that more development without this being addressed first is going to make my situation worse. Okay. 
Okay, next. Is that, is that the extent of your questions? Because you get one shot at it. Okay, is anyone else? Sorry. My name is Chris Barrow. I'm at 53919 Lawson Creek Drive in Phase 1. I've seen some of you before. It's been a while since I've been up here. And I got more of a plea than a question. Um, between Phase 1 and the new phases going up, and there's a few that people have talked about, somebody at some point has abandoned a tractor. And I'm here to represent the board from Phase 1, the, the association board that we have. Nobody will admit to us who owns this rusted tractor that's by the sidewalk where our kids go by all the time. It's one of the builders that knows Mancini or PMP or somebody that's there. It's been there for two years, two and a half years. We've contacted every single developer and builder there and they all claim it's not theirs. We can't move it because it's about five feet off of our land on their common ground and they're not moving it. I find it interesting you brought up um, the dumpster at the apartments that were going up because obviously you're all concerned about aesthetics, but safety too. So could anybody here help us get this tractor off of one of those contractors' lands so our kids don't get hurt? It's rusty. It's Fair a tractor. Enough. Kids play on it. Yep. They're drawn. Can anybody help us with this? Well, if there is a person in this township <laughs> that can help you and get things moving. I, w I will have code enforcement go out there, try to, um, I, I don't know if they're plated or not, but we'll try to find out who the owner is and, and we'll get on it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. We, we never used to have kids. We've got 30 kids in our neighborhood now. Okay. So, all right. Okay. Thank sure. you. Yeah, no problem. Any other questions? No, no, no. Okay. Um, why don't you come back up? So, so I, yeah, access, so it's access. And so then, I am a little more involved with the phase, uh, probably abutting your rear yard. I'm fairly familiar with the issue. I thought it was addressed, so I'm, I apologize if that's continuing. Um, that will, um, there's just kind of some significant grade changes um, it, from where the phase, the residence's phase of the new development abuts the first phase that they're referring to, um, where the rear yards, the future rear yards meet the current rear yards, that will okay, so that, that'll mean, eventually kind of, be addressed kind of, I mean, appreciate, once, you know. And I would hope after this, you guys can talk a little bit, and you can yeah, kind of you know, but frankly, as, as to the issue we're dealing with today, Oh, I thought I was just answering their questions. Sorry. Oh, no, answer my questions, frankly. Yep, so, yep. So, my, my question, so my question is, access to build the duplexes um, will come will through the... Any, okay. That will come the, through the phase that's being developed okay. currently up, that abuts that gonna, the single. So that could exacerbate erosion in her property? No, it should not. Okay, no, that's, no. okay that, thank you. But the, the, you know, there'll be pavement eventually through this first phase that will connect to the, that will provide access to the duplex phase. So, I just want to clarify. So, that won't be traffic on Lawson Creek Drive. No. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. To the planner, your comments. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, my first comment. I was just going to mention if they could maybe put up a sign construction um, traffic uh, somewhere off of 25 Mile to come oh, in through Phase clear. One, so they're um, so it's clear, I did, clearly identified where their trucks need to go instead of going up on Lawson, Lawson Drive. Um, as we stated that this was uh, approved last year as a final PUD for the entire project and each section then was parceled off for each development phase. Um, the PUD process happens in two phases. The first is the preliminary and then once th um, the bo this board and the township board agree to a preliminary review, the applicant then proceeds for final submission of the PUD. At that time, it's just a formality. Everything should be addressed by the time we get to the final PUD, meaning engineering has to be completed, all your county permits have to be obtained. Um, at this time, based on my recommendation and a few comments that they have to address on the site plans and the engineering comments, I would recommend to postpone until we've gotten to that point and then actually uh, come back for final approvals. Okay. Any questions for the planner? Do you have any final comments to what the planner said? Okay, fair I enough. Is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Support. Moved and supported. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, basis for our recommendation uh, this evening must be based on the following standards. Compatibility with adjacent land uses, consistent with and promote the intent and purpose of the special land use, 
compatibility with the natural environment, consistent with capacities of public services and facilities affected by the proposed use, protect the public health, safety, and welfare, and the adequacy of public access to the site. We may recommend approval. We can disapprove this request or we can table it to evaluate the information further. Is our motion? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Casale. I move to postpone site plan number 24-18, Stephen Mancini, Legacy Village Land Holdings, LLC, vacant parcel number 23-07-09-200-029, located south of 25 Mile Road, west of Van Dyke Avenue, Legacy Village Final PUD, duplex component based on the applicant attaining all the necessary engineering approvals and county permits, addressing the Planning Commission and the site plan review comments. Support. Moved by Casale, support by Snyder. Any questions on the motion? Hearing none, Commissioner Casale. Yes. Commissioner Snyder? Yes. Commissioner Long? Yes. Commissioner Baker? Yes. Commissioner Moore? Yes. Commissioner Pone? Yes. Chair votes yes. Okay. Thank you. Stay tuned. You haven't quite approved me yet. Uh, next item site plan number 22 015, Greg Acabelli for Chesterfield 5 LLC. So is your dad paying you double? What's that? Is your dad paying you double? Yeah, I, I, I hope, right? <laughs> uh, Greg Icabelli, 51435 Industrial Drive, Macomb, Michigan, 48042. Uh, we are um, looking to slightly modify the uh, office facade um, to an ongoing industrial uh, new construction project off of uh, Birch Drive, south side of 23 mile between Hayes and uh, Shaner um, by the uh, with the water bottling facility. Um, we are essentially looking to make the building adaptable or uh, marketable. It's uh, currently a spec, so we're basically looking to extend the office to two stories, or optional to extend it to two stories and uh, maintain that same height of the shop so future user will have option um, to add more or less shop space as they see fit. Okay, planner. Thank you, Chairman. Um, based on the modifications, it's consistent. The facade materials are consistent with the existing building. Um, the additional square footage um, will not cause any uh, deficient in parking spaces, so um, I don't have any objections to the proposed modification. Cool. Any question for the planner or petitioner? Seeing none, is there a motion? Mr. Chair. Commissioner Moore. I move to approve the modifications for site plan number 22-015 for Greg Icabelli. 50479 Birch Drive based on the applicant submitting five sets of revised plans for final site plan approval. Support. Moved by Moore, support by Apone. Any questions on the motion? Hearing none, Commissioner Moore? Yes. Commissioner Apone? Yes. Commissioner Casale? Yes. Commissioner Baker? Yes. Commissioner Long? Yes. Commissioner Snyder? Yes. Chair votes yes. Good luck. Thank you. Have a good night, guys. You too. New business, Planning Commission bylaws and rules of procedures updates. Thank you, Chairman. Um, after reviewing the Planning Commission bylaws and rules of procedures, we've noticed that a few discrepancies. Um, one is mostly procedures um, referencing like site plan review committee. Um, the Planning Commission no longer has a site plan review committee, so it's just a matter of updating those rules and regulations to our current procedures. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you looking for a receiving file or a motion to change? Uh, Probably a motion, a motion to change please. them. Yeah. 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 Sir, a motion to adopt. Do we? So, uh, did we get those? I don't remember seeing. Yes. Them. Okay. We're then packed. Okay. I've been busy. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, there's a motion to adopt by so Snyder. Is there support? Support. Uh, and support by Moore. Mm -hmm. Any questions on the motion? Aside from my question, do they exist? Um, all right. Uh, the role, uh, uh, Commissioner Schneider. Yes. Commissioner Moore. Yes. Commissioner Long. Yes. Commissioner Baker. Yes. Commissioner Casale. Yes. Commissioner Pone. Yes. Chair votes yes. Uh, business on the floor. Anyone want to say anything? No, no, no. Mr. Chair, move to adjourn. Is there support? Support. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.